Hello and welcome to Thanet Writers Meet Richard Skinner. Richard is a writer of fiction, non-fiction, poetry and many other things besides non-fiction as well. Um, he is director of the fiction programme at Favour and Faber and I'm sure there are other things we're going to get onto, or I hope there are things we'll get onto at the same time. Richard, welcome. Thank you very much. Um, let's start with the fiction, um, if we may, because we're here at Margate Bookie this weekend recording this and, and I'm, I'm particularly interested in your fiction to start with. Now, you've been published with Favour and Faber three times? Have I got the, yeah, three novels. Three, with three novels. Three novels. Um, how did you get accepted with them? How, what was that process of, of acceptance for you? Um, actually, it's a funny little story because I, the first thing I ever got published with Faber was some poems in, a, in an anthology that a very young 22 or 23 year old a guy called Lee Braxton was in charge of putting out for Faber. And Lee was the assistant to the poetry editor um, <clears throat> and the magazine was his thing. So he, he, I met him and I sent him the poems and he accepted them. And the, the magazine came out and then promptly folded because Lee was then moved to fiction and became a fiction editor. Um, and when I finished The Red Dancer in 1999, I sent it to him because I didn't know anyone, anyone else in the publishing industry and I knew him and he took it. So I didn't need an agent or, or anything. I didn't need to send it anywhere else. So I was very lucky and very, it's a very unusual route to publication. It absolutely is, yeah. I mean, and actually, you talk about agents there as well. What, what are your thoughts on the agent process? Because some big name authors do have them, some big name authors don't have them. And, and actually, sometimes that can be a, a difficult process in itself. What, what's your thoughts on that? Well, I think, you know, for new writers, uh, absolutely, without question, you have to get representation because agents know the legal side of the business and the financial side of the business. It's really complicated, contracts are labyrinthine, very, very tricky, so there's no way you can do it yourself <laughs> without getting shafted, frankly, by some unscrupulous publishers. So, absolutely, I would always say, absolutely get representation. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, so, from, a, from a, uh, an inspiration point of view for you, what inspires you to, to write fiction? What kind of you made that move from past poetry into, in, into fiction in terms of publication. What, what gives you that inspiration? It, it, in a sense, why do you do it? <laughs> well, that's a good question. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, I think it's, it's you know, finding the right subject that, uh, that will touch you and, and sort of move you. Uh, we do an exercise at Faber Academy where I ask people to list their favourite books, you know, books that have really moved them and, and touched them. And then I ask them to find a common theme through them. And there always is one. Uh, and that's the kind of thing that you should be writing about. And, and, and uh, you know, looking through my three novels and the other novels I've written and, and haven't published, because um, they're, they're not good enough, uh, I can definitely see it, that there's a common theme for me too. So it's, it's more finding the right subject, you know, to write about um, rather than the right character fictional character or Right, okay. Well actually I think I want to pick up on that you mentioned about um, uh, the Faber Academy and you're also your director of the fiction fiction program. Yeah. Um, and of course one thing I must remember to, to kind of reference is you have literally written a book on how to how to write um, fiction yes, fiction absolutely. as well. I'm interested to know about that process and actually you, you know when you were writing that book were there things that came out? Did you find common themes that everyone agreed on, or, as in how to write creative fiction, how to teach mm. creative fiction, mm. or were there as many ideas as there are teachers and authors in the field? Um, well, it was just... So, so the book is called Writing a Novel. It comes out on the 2nd of August, um, Faber and Faber Publishing, and um, it's the result of you know, nearly 20 years of, of teaching creative writing for me. And, um, so it was a fantastic opportunity for me to put everything that I knew and felt was you know, relevant and important and useful to put it all into one place, you know, with, with examples and exercises. So it was a very, very satisfying book to write and put together. But it took me a long time to put it together. Um, and 
Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's great. I mean, from, from your point of view, from, from the teaching point of view, and actually teaching a, a, a room full of students how to, uh, to, how to appreciate creative writing, how to get involved with it, what's the hardest thing to teach? And flip side to that, what's the easiest thing, perhaps, to, to teach as well? Um, well, some of the Faber Academy alumni who are reading with me today will, will probably attest that I think one of the, the main thing to get over as, as a new writer is confidence. Mm. You know, is to, to give yourself permission to take yourself seriously as a writer, to take your writing seriously, because everyone in your group at Faber Academy takes it seriously, so why shouldn't you? Um, but the most important thing that uh, we try to give the new students, the new writers and students in the Academy is confidence. Right. You know, to to say you can do it, you know. Um, you just have to try, you have to work hard, you have to um, take the knockbacks as well as the, you know, bits that are good and persevere and you'll get there in the end. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, uh, again, Richard, and I have to thank you for this, you're linking to things that also I want to talk about and you're making my mind fire with questions at the same time. Vanguard, um, let, let's, let's talk Vanguard because that's a, a, a big piece of your your life, your, 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 your working week. Yeah. Um, what I'm interested in is you, 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 on, you go on tours, you encourage these writing, these speaking events where people speak there and, and actually present their, their writing. What is, what makes a good event like that? What, what's the, the magic ingredient? How can you kind of, if you as a host, as a facilitator, as a founder of it, how does that work in practice to actually make that, that happen? Well, I started Vanguard in 2011, so it's been going for seven years now, um, because people who came through the Faber Academy, who were fantastic writers, uh, weren't getting gigs, reading gigs, um, without getting published first. Basically, I, I started the Faber, uh, Vanguard readings to, to offer them a, a platform, a place to come along and, and read. Um, so the joy for me is just seeing the, their joy in, in having the chance to perform, stand up in front of a crowd, you know. Uh, usually they're terribly nervous about it, but afterwards they're completely euphoric, you know. It's just a, it's a very important step, you know, to present yourself to the world as a, a writer reading from your, your work. So and I still try to keep to that ethos very much that four of the events, uh, four of the ten events that I organize a year are all for Faber Academy students um, to make sure that they get a chance to, to read before they go on and, and publish and, and go on and do many, many readings and, and uh, events. Yeah. So it's really important to give them a chance to, to read um, before they get published. And actually on, on that kind of well, narrow it down slightly to something we talked about already, your poetry and that sort of things and, and actually linking it in with the presentation of it because Poetry, a lot of that is presentation, is, is actually engagement kind of with poetry slams or poetry talks or how, however people present their poetry. Do, do you find from your experience that poetry is something that needs to be performed to be appreciated fully? Can you get some experience from reading poetry on the, on the, on the, on the page? What, what's your experience of that? Well, we run, um, sort of, I'd say, two, maybe three poetry-only events every year. And I have to say that in many ways, they're probably the most satisfying vanguards for everyone. Because, you know, there's, there's just nothing better than, than um, coming along and hearing five or six poets read five or six poems each. Or, you, know, you, you, get a, you get the whole work uh, and you get a little range of, of their work. Um, with novels, it's, it's different because obviously you can only read an extract from chapter one, usually, or, um, and most of the story is, is left unknown. But I think there's just something quite special about hearing a person read their poetry, which is probably the most personal kind of writing you can do as a writer. Yeah. Alive, you know, that you're with them, that's pretty special. Yeah. Richard, I could talk to you all afternoon about this. I'm conscious that actually you have other commutes this afternoon as well, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to deliberately not. Um, so, reluctantly, despite that, I haven't even had a chance to talk to you about your non fiction yet and the other work. Unfortunately, we, I, hopefully, I'll ever get a chance to talk to you about that another time. But my last question to you is how do you connect with your readers? How do you evoke emotions in your readers? How do you maintain and engage with uh, a reader base? 
do all those things as a writer. In, in the writing, you mean? It, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Or in, in poetry, in, in all of your in, in, in all of your works. That's a really hard question as well. Um, I, I think I would say we, we often talk about this at the academy that I think probably the thing that people love most about the books that they love most is the characters. Right. Um, you know, people remember characters. They don't necessarily remember plots quite so much. Uh, so think of all of the books you love, and, and, and I'm pretty sure that most of them would be you love them because of the characters. So I think for me, it's creating, um, you know, really convincing, fully fleshed, three-dimensional characters in your books. If, if you can do that, then I think you, you've done very well. Well, thank you. I think it's been Cheers. fascinating to talk to you, thank and you I, I wish we had three times as long to be able to speak and talk about it, but that's not possible today. But thank you so much for your time, Richard, and I appreciate you visiting Margate and sitting by the sea and talking to you. So it's been fantastic. Great to be here. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And thank you all for watching. And until next time, thank you from Thank Writers and goodbye. Mm -hmm.